last time on Chasing Atlanta. I'm thinking if I want to be here or not. What's wrong? I'm, I'm literally like three seconds away walking out. What happened already? Can we have one day? So you gonna play or you gonna you wanna talk to him before you play? Troy feels that I guess some things have been said or he's heard some things. I guess through the grapevine or something, which I had no knowledge of. I'm not gonna say who said it because they're not here. I'd rather them be there so it'll be like boom, 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 boom. So if if nobody, if it wasn't said, right. it wasn't said, then it could just be like it could be dead. That's one of the reasons why I really haven't spent a one-on-one -on -one moment with Oliver because you are the company that you keep, right? And certain situations I've been hearing that you've been just rubbing people wrong, and I'm like, I'm in a good space right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tell your friends to watch it because. Y'all think I'm boring, but baby, you don't want this show. Because if you want a show, I can give you well, a you show. Friend, Oliver and I met up with Sky last night. <sighs> Let me tell you about the tea. Cameron is crazy. Me and Sky is trying to date. Okay, okay. We're, we're taking it more serious than we did the first season. Well, Sky said last night that he never said that to Cameron. He's never. Cameron texted him saying he felt like he had missed his opportunity. And Sky said, well, she felt like she was too connected with too many people. And we know what connected me. So I'm kind of lost on how me, me, Oliver, we're cool with you. You know, we're friends and stuff like that. And word on the street was that it should be no reason why Lauren England is trying to meet up with Busy. A phone call should be had before any type of sit down, any words have been exchanged. Your friend should have called you and be like, hey, Busy here trying to talk to me about X, Y, and Z. What is your call? To be honest, that's wrong. Oh, where is your man? Girl, if I have one, if y'all see that motherfucker out, call me immediately. So we're here today to volunteer at the drop-in center for LGBT homeless youth and we've invited Troy along to gain perspective and to see what's really going on in these Atlanta streets. I don't fit to your bars, beauty queens with no gloves. You can do better, I dare you to be wilder. So today we were born inviting me to the LGBT Homeless Center and you know, this is more of my steeds. Like not being around drama, not really being around any foolishness, but being able to give back. You know, that's what I'm all about. That's what Touch by Tag is all about really, to touch lives and touch other people. So, you know, we're gonna see what I can do and how I can help out. Here's the opportunity to get a chance to look at, you know, our drop-in center. So this is really where they come in first. They come in through security, so they get checked because we know that, you know, safety is always a thing for them. So a lot of them are carrying weapons and stuff. And so we want to make sure that we check them in when they come in, but we also, we'll give them back to them when they leave because we know that that's what's protecting them when they're out um, up under the bridge and, you know, out in the community. We do have a little library here and a little cubby space. So this is where they're able to come in and shower daily. So we're open from 8 in the morning to 8 at night and they're able to come in here and shower and um, you know get cleaned up. But then also we also give them the opportunity to go to their store to get fresh um, garbs so that you know they don't have to keep wearing the same stuff. So again this is our conference room. So this is really where where they drop everything off at. Okay. <laughs> when they got to sort through, it, sort it, through yeah. it and put it where it needs to go. Usually it's a, a space where the youth will meet and they have small groups, more intimate settings and being out there all the time. Mm -hmm. They can watch movies on the drop screen or even on um, that um, TV. We'll move the table and set it up like a theater so that, mm -hmm. you know, they feel like, you know, they're actually in a theater getting mm -hmm. popcorn and snacks and so on and so forth. And of course, this is Bryce. Bryce handles our cooking, so Bryce. Right. Hello, Hi. Bryce. Hi. 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 Sorry I'm not as glee today. I had a hard working weekend this weekend at my other job. You gotta work hard. Like, I'm you gotta facing work. myself. No, actually, you gotta work smart. <laughs> you gotta work smart. Come on, work come smart. on, Bryce. The guy's giving us a tour of the homeless shelter, and it's just kinda disturbing to see that, you know, 
people really don't have homes to go to, like, you know, people in my community. It's, it's also a brighter side to the store because they have somewhere to go, they have somewhere to release themselves, they have somewhere to be in the daytime and be safe. I also bought a few things to give to the kids for them to, to be able to wear, to be able to, you know, look nice in, gave them a little touch by tag fashion. Lost and Found is not a homeless shelter. It's a drop-in center. So it's only open for 12 hours. And the people who come there oftentimes don't have anywhere else to go afterwards. So to see that it's at this bridge, it's under this bridge, is very heartbreaking. And it's very humbling at the same time. These people don't have nowhere to sleep. Like, they sleep under a bridge. Like, that's really major. Like, that's crazy. This is a lot. This is a lot to deal with. And then think about when it's raining. Oh, child. Yeah. I would be so depressed and over it. Like, oh, they don't want to leave. Oh, sweetie, it's 8 o'clock. I'm sorry. Like, it's hard to make them leave at night. Mm -hmm. But we know we have to because we have uh, we have our lives live. We have places we need to go uh, to. Y'all have, still have a job that y'all need And to the do. shelter is in 24 hours. That's, the, that's hours. the biggest that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. Ernest takes us outside to the bridge where the kids actually sleep, and which is pretty much their home. We take stuff for granted so much in the world that we live in. We want so much more for ourselves. We want so much more than we already have. And to see that these people have nothing, it was just, it was, it was really disturbing. Like really disturbing. Think about the, they, they, they shut down a couple of shelters in downtown Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? Those shelters are closed, and so. Even though these kids are considered youth, they're over the age of 18, so any shelters they go to, they're adult shelters. So they still have to fight with the older adults who know how to work the system. Uh-huh. So when I tell you the shelter opens at uh, six o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. The older ones are gonna be there four. at three and four, mm -hmm. right? What time are y'all gonna be there? At six o'clock. Maybe they're already, maybe they're, and then every bed is gone. Already gone. Every bed is so gone. So you done traveled all the way over there and spent your last bit of money to get over there. Oh, on the martyr. On the martyr. Mm -hmm. Or you done jumped the martyr train to mm -hmm. get over there. Risk gonna go to jail. Risk gonna go to jail. Yep. People see we were born and they think like, oh, they have it together and everything's uh, packaged and pretty. But what they do not know is that me and Jay Twine, we actually met in a Home, homeless and we were living in a similar situation a program just like lost and found and yeah and that's where we met and that's where we connected musically i have had to sleep in stairwells and mm -hmm. sometimes i've had to call a friend and beg to stay for a couple nights i've had train to sleep on the train for hours so mm -hmm. you know looking back at my life and how i've been not thankful and not appreciative of you know what you got and what you've and what you've made of yourself mm -hmm. and just being able to see everybody's a check away from, from losing, losing it all. all yeah even if you are chasing your dreams even if, if you are doing a lot you're not exempt like this could happen to anybody anybody could be homeless just like that It's lunchtime and we were born are here and we're going to serve them finally. It's just an overall blessing to be able to give back to our community. They're smiling, they're grateful, and yes. they're happy to talk to us and relate to, to us, us because we've definitely been through the same situation Wisham. and we're mm -hmm. testaments that you can get through any adversity, anything you can. that you go through. So dumb. I wish I could get you out of my head.
friend, Lyric Roche, for some help, um, as well as Tony Mincy, the director, creative visionaire behind the critically acclaimed YouTube show, Guy Code, ATL, to help me out, cause bitch, I don't know nothing about dancing, okay? If you ask me to sing, rap, talk trash, maybe tell a couple jokes, I got you, but if it comes to dancing, I don't know nothing past a one-two step, okay? I'm a nigga sitting cute in the front row. I'm a nigga sitting cute in the front row. I'm a nigga sitting cute in the front row. In the front row. In the front row. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. In the front row. In the front row. Yes, indeed. Look at these hoes like no fatigue. Sitting pretty with the cramp back since he. Legend with the keys like Chris CT. Get you best believe you're the best I be. In a glory hole, but I'm next to blow. Any mini mo, you're next to go. I feel the show. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. I'm a bitch sitting pretty in the front row. In the front row. In the front row. In the front row. So a couple weeks ago, I actually got a phone call while on set at my music video for Twix the Board Game asking for my presence to open up for Dreezy. Yes, Chicago's finest, okay? The one we always see hold up with Jacquees wants Oliver Twist to open up for her in Atlanta. A couple months ago in December, I actually put out in the universe that I wanted to open up for Dreezy, so for this to be happening now, it's crazy. So I gotta get all my ducks in a row because I gotta kill it, kill it, kill it, or be killed, and bitch, I'm surviving. Call me your highness, cause she come from my highest Basic bunnies behind us, they better catch up like Heinz's I flood the floor, it's the finest My steelo touch at the Midas They step aside, not beside us That cold is blow, excuse my sinus Let's get it, I'm a dog, diddy devo Pushing that, whipping that negro With a coin bitch and a clutch That cat, better key go Keep a tight lip like a bleed hoe I'ma back it up in your gut I'ma stack it up in a buck All about a meal, nigga, what? All about a tail of the cut And the carrots where the wrist at But you been that, tryna run it up But I feel that know too much about dancing but I know what looks good okay I need a girl that's confident I need a girl that knows that she knows that she knows and everybody else knows that she knows but these girls is ready so that's only actually making me a little bit nervous cuz bitch I gotta step my game up I just want to thank y'all so much for coming out and doing this um, with me for me I'm really excited and good luck yeah <laughs> coming up Chasing Atlanta. After hearing about y'all meeting up and you having this conversation with him and you saying that I told you, you made it seem like I came and I withdrew information to tell you that this man was w running around town saying that he was paying your bills when that wasn't the way that the conversation happened between you and I. You never once said to me last year that you felt any fucking type of way about me. I sat on the phone with you. I cried, literally, we were on the phone for two and a half hours on FaceTime when your ass was getting your fucking treatment administered to you and your ass got sick. I cried for you, my nigga. What's up, y'all? Y'all, I know who it is. It's your boy Q. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to me and my crazy ass castmates. Some of us doing a lot, and some of us not doing so much. But make sure you subscribe and tune in to us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. to the Chasing Reality brand and follow us on all social media sites at Chasing Reality. It's your boy Q. Stay tuned. Asking what Troy do, where Troy be at, why he ain't up around. Baby girl, because it's really, I'm not here catching a point for real. You know, I'm a store manager and I have Q coming in today just to chat with me because, you know, last time I seen Q, we had a little incident because I told him that I didn't want to be around one of his friends and he invited me somewhere where one of his friends was. And so now we're here just to, you know, hash out a few things. So, 
Welcome to my store. So thanks for inviting me to your your domain, your space. You know my space, you know my area. Ooh, the office, the office. You got a whole you know, office. Whole office out here, you know, big boss things at 24. Come on, big boss things. How yeah. long you been with this particular company? Well, I've been with uh, the company for at least a year and a half now. I'm um, just working my way up the scale, trying to see as far as I can go. Um, before I eventually quit, because like I said, I don't want to work, you know, forever. But right. I'm just really just using this as a way to brand my business and get my Yeah, business. I tell anybody, definitely use your nine to five to be the, you know, the, the push behind your dream. Right. You, you ain't got no fun, you can't be out here dreaming in La La Land. That's what a lot of people do, a lot of smoking mirrors and stuff in Atlanta. So I did it for a long time. I had a nine right. to five to drive and push right. my dream. So you definitely in your lane, you yeah. 24. So I'm going down to Troy's job today. They have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him because I know that he was upset with me a few weeks ago about the whole football situation. So today I'm looking to get to know him just a little bit more. I know you be out of the loop sometimes, but it's really, <laughs> it's a really, <laughs> It really wasn't a big issue for me, the fact that Gardini was there and I kind of like, you know, with me texting you before saying, hey, if Gardini's there, you know, I just don't want to be there. I'd rather talk to him on my own time right. versus it being around other people and it being in front of a group because I'm not, I'm just not the type of person. Right. I'd rather us have our own little, our own little time and us be able to work out any issues that we have because regardless, you know, what he said wasn't really that bad. Yeah. It really wasn't that much. So. You know what? I don't want to hear Gardini's name for the rest of the day. I don't even want to defend another battle with Gardini name on it. Well, first of all, I never knew you talk so fast. Yeah, you know. Tell me going to 10 miles an hour. Gardini had actually hit me up that morning with like, you know that he wasn't responding. So in my mind, I'm thinking that he's not coming. Right. Because it's early, if you know Gardini personally, which you don't, right. and you know, he's my friend, but he asleep all day, so I knew that my dad had to leave early that day. So I was like, well, I want everybody to just kind of come out, meet my dad and everything like that, and just kind of get some one-on-one -on -one time. We can talk, chit-chat, chop it up. But, so to me, Gardini wasn't coming. So word on the street is that Gardini was sitting around talking about me with, you know, some of the other people in the group. And he said that I was boring and I was this and I was that. And I'm just like, you know, I told you I didn't want to really be around Gardini at the football game because I want to have my own conversation with Gardini. I texted him before I arrived and said, hey, if Gardini's here, I don't want to be there. And he still had him there. It just had me feeling some type of way. So now, let's just, I just feel like I just want to voice my concerns to him and why I felt this type of way. I'll step up and say, if you thought I was throwing shade, I really wasn't. Like, I really, and I really wanted everybody to just connect with my dad and just talk about, you know, some guy right. stuff and kick it with and, you know, just a lot because it's a lot of people, you know, I don't really know the relationship between you and your dad, but I know that me and my dad, we've came a long way from where we were and when we first started our relationship, you know what I'm saying? I don't really have a close relationship with my dad, per se, I don't feel like. I mean, growing up, of course, we went fishing, we did the fishing trips, you know, he taught me how to drive, but it's like, as I got older and got to come to myself and realize who I was and, you know, what I liked and who I wanted to be with. It was just like, I feel like I gave my own kind of, let me reserve from that because it was like, I didn't want my dad to feel like I was, I didn't want him to feel any type of way about me. Me and Q are just sitting here talking about, you know, our father's situations and to see Q and his father interacting at the football game, it kind of really touched me in an emotional way because it was like, dang, like I don't have that relationship with my dad. To be able to tell Q how I feel and him to give me the encouragement that he gave me and for me to really just tell my dad like who I really am, it just made me feel really good. It just gave me that strength. And I actually did tell my dad who I was. And you know, he's giving me that support. Like he told me that, you know, he supports me in everything that I do and who I am. And he loves me still to this day. And you know, I'm his only kid. I just really didn't want to disappoint him. I really didn't want, his son to disappoint him. Cause you know, as a son, they want you to be masculine. They want you to be this, they want you to be that. But to know that he loves me for who I am, it just made me feel really good. Cause I know how it feels to not, to not want your father to feel let down. Right. You know, being a LGBT, being, being gay, being whatever you want to be. It mm -hmm. took me a long time because this is the thing, this is the relationship between my father. Me and my father, we were, he was present in my, household right but he wasn't present in my life right you gotta worry about you right. you gotta go to him as an adult man and say this is how i feel right. 
these are the areas where I need you. My brothers, they could go out and throw the football and whatever the case may be, go pick up a shovel and shove dirt and throw shit around and I didn't need that. I needed somebody to have a conversation with me. Sit me on your lap, rub my head, um, tell me it'll be okay. I hate that you didn't get to like really indulge in a moment, but I, I really released this door and I released this positive energy on you that you take that, take that that I give you, these deposit, these nuggets, and just go, you know, deal with things with your father. Because I feel like you're an amazing person, you know, Thank you went to fam you. <laughs> so word on the street is that Q in the street got a crush on the little touch by tag. So you know what? Kids say I'm a little messy, so I had to be a little messy. Cause I just want to know. But you know, they say cute dating, but that really ain't got nothing to do with me. I have a question for you, because there's a few things out here running on the streets. Um, about Q in the streets. Ah, ah. So, the streets are talking in the streets saying that Q has a crush on Troy. <laughs> I think Troy is very attractive. Um, <laughs> I think Troy is very attractive. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, this. I think you're attractive. Thank you. I think you're really handsome, too cute. I feel like Yana. Like, how does that make you feel? How does that make me feel? Slightly hot and bothered. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> 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 Hit me up. Hit me up. You know, I'm all for a little daddy, right. daddy yeah. son get together. Hit me what up. Was this Good seeing you as well. Get back on the floor. You got money to me. Well, I'm going to sit back here for a little while. <laughs> See you later. over to my home to catch up with her regarding some things that's been going on in the world. The people is very busy, so we must discuss immediately, promptly, surely. So you're the people mad at us. For what? That we canceled Kendra's um, benefit concert. Benefit thing. So I was in New York about a month ago. I went up there for the Queen Supreme Court, ended up staying for a week because I had I ended up getting booked for the rest of the week. I'm on my way to Jersey, and I get a phone call from Wayne the Pain. Wayne the Pain is like, Hey Oliver, I really need your help. You know, nobody's really helping me with Kendra. Their production team isn't really helping with Kendra. None of the people in the group are really trying to help me with Kendra. Is there anything that you can do to help? I said, Wayne and Payne, I'm currently in New York right now, so I can't really drop what I'm doing to help you right now. I said, I'll be back. Um, I'll be back in Atlanta on this Saturday. When I get back, because I'm going right back out, because I gotta go, I gotta go to Memphis mm -hmm. for a show. I said, when I get back, I'll create you some shirts that say Free Lil Kendra. I'll design it myself, free of charge. I'll put it on my store, on my merchandise store, and I'll sell the t-shirts for you, and y'all just promote it, and then all the money that I get from it, I'll just send to y'all so that y'all can, that could be my contribution to getting Lil Kendra out, right? That's my friend, I love Kendra, way in, way to pay, we cool, da 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 Fast forward like two days later, you're on an interview with The Wiley Show talking about ain't nobody helping you do anything. The only one that has really put forth any effort to help me at all, and I'm going to say this, to be honest, is Bardini. Wow. He's the only one that has, I'm not going to say Oliver hasn't reached out, but it was like when you reach out to someone, I feel like it should be one-on-one. -on -one. So Oliver, have Oliver, Oliver gave, you know, I'm going to ask you a question, have Oliver gave to um, towards her bail money, towards Kendra bail money? No, um, yeah, nobody has from the cash has done it. Well, then Wiley schedules an interview with me, and I basically was like, yeah, we, all of us are helping, all of us are trying to do something. By that time, while I was in New York, I had text you and we were born saying, let's do something, let's put together a little concert, whatever, whatever, invite the fans and out. We all said, and we all said, cool, this is while I'm still in New York. I haven't even touched back down in Atlanta yet. I do an interview with Wiley, and Wiley's like, well, why wasn't none of y'all helping her? I'm like, well, Wiley, at the end of the day, Kendra's grown, and we're all grown. So there's none of our responsibilities to help her do I whatever. Mean, anything is from the heart. You can't make you can't make somebody do something. Do something like it's you can't make you can't put it on production, the show, or the cast. You can't do any of them because at the end of the day, 
those were the decisions that she chose to put herself in. Mind you, this is the same blogger that called Kendra a simple trans, 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 trans woman, trans whatever, and I cussed him out in an email. You supposed to be looking flawless. Your makeup not up to par. Your music not up to par. That is a regular transgender woman. Okay, she ain't got no albums, sales, she ain't with gold, she ain't with platinum. Bring her on the show and we can get some more fans to actually listen to her music. Me and him was on the on, on the interview basically screaming at each other because I felt like he had disrespected Kendra. Two days later, I got a phone call from Kendra's sister cursing me out, talking about you a snake in the grass. Why you got on the interview talking about Kendra was older than you and she's 35? I was like, first of all, I never said Kendra was 35. The person that was with me said she was 35. I never said her age. The point I was making is that Kendra is over a decade older than me, which she is, that's fact. And so anything I do is out of the kindness of my heart. I'm not obligated to help her out. Fast forward 20 minutes later, I get a phone call from Kendra. So I'm thinking Kendra, like me and Kendra, we about to connect. I'm about to chop it up with her, da 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 da. You know Kendra got on the phone cussing me out. Be my friend, I have been genuine to you every single day. You know what Kendra, I'm not your friend, how about this? How about this, since I'm not your friend? No, since I'm not your friend and I'm not trying to do nothing to help you, take me off the song and I can, everybody don't worry about coming out next week. Just don't worry about coming out. First of all, I did charge you for that verse. Not saying I'm some hot bitch, but my time is worth something. I did charge you for the verse. I didn't charge you for the verse. These people saying fucked up shit about you in these interviews, in these reviews, I'm the one that's in their inbox telling them, hey, y'all can't be saying that. Especially if you LGBT and you black. You can't you can't be demeaning a trans woman. Girl, girl, I'm taking meetings, getting up out of my bed after I've been on the road for a whole fucking two weeks with shelves trying to get food catered for your event. So girl, don't be get on the phone talking about I'm trying to kick you while you're down. So when I received that phone call from Kendra's sister and Kendra from prison calling me, cursing me out, saying that I was kicking her while she was down, I was very confused. I'm like, girl, I'm around here trying to put on something for you. I'm around here trying to do stuff for you. Wayne the Pain is calling me, asking me for help, and I'm doing stuff for you, and you want to give me all this energy. Girl, I did the song with you. Girl, I gave you your apology. Girl, I've been trying to link up. I've opened up my house to you multiple times. You and Wayne the Pain have called me asking, me, asking me for help multiple times. We sat on the phone, cried together, and this is how you want to do me right now? I officially have to wipe my hands of it. I said, well, Kendra, since you think I'm not being a good friend of you, since you think I'm not being a good friend of you, we won't do this next week, Wednesday, and don't want even worry about me being on the song because I don't want to do nothing that's fake, and if you think I'm not being a good friend, don't worry about it. Me putting on a benefit concert for Kendra does not give me any clout, if that's what Oliver's trying to chase. That doesn't give me clout. If anything, bitch, I had to get off the road from fucking Charlotte, and I was fucking tired, and I wanted to just lay my ass in my bed. Then, comes Friday, Wayne the Pain posted on his Instagram that the event on the flyer that I created in your venue space that we've been planning out was canceled. I said, it's canceled? I ain't canceled it, I was still gonna do it. Kendra called me, cursing me out, her sister called me, cursing me out, and then you got on your social media saying an event that I was putting together was canceled without calling me first, I said, oh. I have no more time. To me, it just seems like y'all just trying to play the blame game. People carrying what they want to carry back to her and Kendra wanting to find somebody to blame. Of course, it's easy to blame me. So girl, something positive. I'm gonna meet up with your good sister. Oh, Gardenia. Oh child, she mad at me too. To truly move forward with life, I have to let that completely go mm -hmm. and I want to meet up with her because it's like if you really think that I would take the time out of my day to call the police on you and I always told her that I said, it doesn't make sense to me called. because my thing is you got booked somebody sent it to me and you got booked in Florida where I am on God's earth did I get your PO number from and, I ain't trying and to what am I going to I ain't trying to shade you but girl I don't think you smart enough to even find what another bitch girl, P.O. officer is just I ain't that goddamn smart bitch. I don't think you that smart. <laughs> I'm not that smart and bitch you know I'm cross, it don't cross my mind because I'm not I'm not an evil person like that mm. to want to see somebody get locked up. So for you to just keep making it seem like you went to jail because of me, it's like I just want to end everything because you would not continue to 
slander me and just make it seem like I'm out here to get you when it's actually the other way around. So Jalon and Gardini potentially meeting up. I've always been a proponent of it. When Gardini and I were cool, I always told her she just needed to meet up with Jalon, tell her what she needed to tell her and leave all that shit in the past. There's no way you can walk into any future fulfill what blessings and prosperity if you're holding on to bullshit from yesterday. So hopefully, Lauren and Gardini can sit down one-on-one -on -one and air it all out without a bitch getting fired up. Who would have ever thought, bitch? Bitch. Girl, don't touch me, because you know that we man. <laughs> I can really see Lauren and I being a dynamic duo. I mean, she's successful, I'm successful. She's young and fabulous, I'm young and fabulous. She's hated in the group, I'm hated in the group. When I walk into the room, I own it. When she walks into the room, she almost owns it. So, I mean, we're just so match made in heaven, girl. Scam recognize scam. <laughs> Pay them, pay the bitches no mind. Girl, girl, RuPaul said, RuPaul said the best. situation I mean I told you what happened with the situation refresh my memory I told you we had a conversation we had a meet up mm -hmm. of course to talk about the whole paying my bill situation mm -hmm. we got heated we went back and forward he asked him what did I hear it from I told him well I heard it from Devon mm -hmm. because Gardini told Devon mm -hmm. and then I also said I also talked to Sky and I heard it from Sky mm. okay but is that how it happened he said we talked. Who? Me and you talked. We talked. And so right. how did it happen? And when I told you about what Devon told me, you was like, oh, I heard something pertaining to that too. Despite however I felt about him, I encourage you to have a conversation. And I felt like in that moment where you quote unquote name dropped, mm -hmm. when you and I spoke, you told me my name came up. Mm -hmm. That was a conversation that you and I had. And when I expressed to you how irritated I was after hearing about y'all meeting up and you having this conversation with him and you saying that I told you, you made it seem like I came and I withdrew information to tell you that this man was w running around town saying that he was paying your bills when that wasn't the way that the conversation happened between you and I. The reason that I didn't introduce it on camera, the reason why I didn't introduce it to the situation because I wasn't sure what the source, whether the source being Gardini or whomever, the powers that be, was a reliable source. I encourage you to have a conversation with him, despite my own personal feelings about him. Mm -hmm. So I felt like you were being totally dishonest in that particular situation. And when I reached out to you to have a conversation with you, you did what you normally do. Mm -hmm. You shut down, you withdrew, you didn't want to talk about the situation. And I felt like at that point, you owe me at least that. Okay. One, when I told you, I called you that same day after you did. I had that conversation with Q, and I told you that I said that y'all told me this information. No, yes, you did yes, not. Yes, I did. No, you did. Yes, I did. You're I not going to do it. You said, verbatim, you said your name came up. Because here's the thing. If you had got it from me, if I had called you up and told you that Q said that about you, I would have been introduced to that. I would have said it in the motherfucking meeting that we had sitting sitting at the counseling session. I would have said it at Montel's event. I would have been brought it up. I've never been a bitch to bite my motherfucking tongue. I felt like what you did in that moment, you wanted to motherfucking stop, drop, and roll because the fucking kitchen got hot. When it got hot, Cameron ass got to fucking running because you were so motherfucking worried about this image that you got. Mm -hmm. You wanted to be friends with the popular bitches so motherfucking bad that you didn't want you didn't want to be friends with the bitches that have been riding or die for you for the last two motherfucking years. That didn't mean shit to Cameron. Okay. 
you know what 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 the meaning of friendship for me for you guys was so really if you feel that way and that's your opinion that's your opinion but that's not how it was brought so like i said after no I had let's a get to the friendship after i had, what's, a, what's, com what's, after what's, I had what's, a conversation with you about the situation regardless of your name being brought up you could have expressed to me on the phone about it instead of going and taking about? it to q and having a conversation about it Cameron, when i called you that if same you night, said to me your name came up instead of saying well sky i brought your name up you said your name was brought up you always tell half of the story you never tell the entire story and when it came time to confront you about it, I talked to Montel about it. I talked to everybody else. And when I tried to get you on the phone about it, or when I tried to have a meeting with you about it, you didn't want to have a meeting about it. Because it was nothing to talk about after we already What do you mean it wasn't nothing to talk about? You made it seem like I brought information to you. And and the, the, the part that's irritating me is because last year, you, myself, and Devon sat on the phone. You had multiple conversations about that dude. You expressed how much you did not like him, how much you felt like that he was doing the most trying to get his fucking camera time being there for you and then your black ass went and sat and had a fucking conversation with him last year and you tried to pretend like i wasn't the loyal friend to you that is what the fuck i was irritated that. about i've never said anything about you not being no loyal friend you did say no, that I you had I, a he, let, let me just say this i'm not i'm not going to raise my voice i'm not going to do all that extra stuff it's not about when being we extra talk, it's about being honest asked, and being I real i told him and expressed to him when he said who came up here who who came up? i said well Sky haven't came up here to see me. Devon haven't. I expressed how I felt about you guys not coming. I never said y'all was said not. We're, you said we were I, not supportive. I did not tell him y'all wasn't supportive. He took that and ran with it. As I told you. It doesn't matter. That. Here's the thing. It doesn't. No one can take anything and run with they anything can. if you don't give them can. something to talk about. There were a lot of motherfucking shit last year that happened. Cameron, that I never even said anything about. That I never aired your ass out about. Never. Never once have I ever motherfucking tried you. Never once have I ever talked about you. Anything that I felt about you, at least I was honest enough to tell you how I felt about you to your face. And that is the issue that I had. You went and sat and had a fucking whole conversation on film with this man about how you felt about me. And what you failed to tell him is that you and I were doing your first fucking treatment the alone. The Where's frustration the is coming at. Where's the footage that I, I, I expressed to him how you was not a loyal friend? What do you mean? With it has been filmed. Whether the fuck has been aired or not is really irrelevant. No. Like, let's be real. If we gonna put real. it all on the table, let's put it all on the I'm table. Being real. This is not about image. This is not about cameras. My issue with you is that you deflect. When the kitchen get hot, your ass want to run. Mm -hmm. And if I mean anything to you as a fucking friend, fuck you wanting to date me. If I mean to you anything as a friend, you should feel comfortable to tell your friend how you felt about them. You never once said to me last year that you felt any fucking type of way about me. I sat on the phone with you. I cried. Literally, we were on the phone for two and a half hours on FaceTime when your ass was getting your fucking treatment administered to you and your ass got sick. I cried for you, my nigga. I cried for you. But you didn't tell people that. You was on the phone with me when I got sick with my first treatment. I wasn't. When I first got my, I, you know what, I I'm get not going to say we did I get not it. talk. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You have an image that you have oh, to protect. It ain't got nothing to do That's with what no it image. is. You have an image that you are trying to image. protect. That's already ruined. I get it. Y'all already it? ruined that. Who, who ruined your image? Because the reality of the situation is you ruined your own fucking image because I'm, of the I'm, shit I'm that you do. Floppy, I straddle the fence. You do. You do. You don't. Right. You don't. Any home moving forward. No, there is no moving forward. Moving you forward. don't flip flop. Who you didn't trash Jaylon. You didn't trash Q. I give what I'm and giving. And it's Mike like, You act like I'm just coming up out of the blue, just talking shit about people. We always had the you same have. conversation. You have. I've never judged on nobody unless somebody Who? said some shit about me first. So what are you talking Wait, about? In what world? In Cameron's oh world? In what world? Right. Because at the end of the day, right. Devon and I know the real motherfucking okay. situation. That's fine. We do. So what image did we tarnish of yours? Because there's Whatever a whole lot I could have said. Whatever image y'all say I have. No, you're the one that said you have an image. Business. You have a brand, right? So what? So what did we tarnish? What did we tarnish? What did we tarnish? You, did we tarnish? you are. I'm not trying to protect Obviously, anything, you are. No. You are. There was a whole lot of shit that you did to me last year that I never said any fucking thing about. No. Well, how about we air it out right, motherfucking now? What about your your, your ex boyfriend? Did you tell me that you went to L. A. You told me you was going to L. A. for fucking business. You come back with a whole motherfucking boyfriend. I had to find out on Instagram that you had a whole motherfucking boyfriend. But you loyal, right? You told 
you told people amongst this group that you felt a certain type of way. The sky wasn't there doing your fucking treatment, but you didn't tell people that you was inboxing me, inviting me to your motherfucking bed. So let's be clear. You or nobody in this fucking circle is gonna ever feel comfortable enough to ever try me. Get your fucking facts straight. I am done, and so are you. Have a good day. Don't try it because you don't want war with me, okay. bitch. Let me tell. Let right, me tell guys. you that. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me be very clear. I'm not Montel. I'm not a Devon. I'm not an Eric. I'm not a motherfucking Oliver. I'm not none of y'all motherfucking girls. Okay? Don't try me, Miss Cameron. Right. Thank you. Let's be clear. What's going on? It's your boy Justin J, aka the King of Reeds. It's going down June 3rd, Chasing Atlanta Reunion Season 3. Girl, finally, we are going to get to the mess, ask the question, and find out what is the tea. Yes, finally, they got your boy hosting the reunion, and that means we're going to be getting to all the information, everything that went down this season. Will Q and Cameron get their shit together? Will Lauren England and Gardena mend their friendship? Or, girl, is it going to be some more drama for Season 4? Girl, if you have not went and got your tickets, you need to be going to get them right now. Go to Chasing Reality. Instagram page, click the link in the bio, follow the link, go get your tickets, girl. Get all your good Judas. Come out June 3rd. We're gonna be at Coco Studios in Atlanta, Georgia, filming the Chasing Atlanta reunion. Girl, we are going to get to all the tea, and your ass need to be there with me, girl. I look forward to seeing all of y'all. Get your tickets now, girl. Come out, get your tickets. We look forward to seeing you. Bye, bitch.